We must also realize that the problems of racial injustice and economic injustice cannot be solved without a radical redistribution of political and economic power. Estimated that we spend $322,000 for each enemy we kill in Vietnam, while we spend in the so-called war on poverty in America only about $53 for each person classified as poor. The other thing I want you to understand is this, that it didn't cost the nation one penny to integrate lunch counters. It didn't cost the nation one penny to guarantee the right to vote. But now we are dealing with issues that cannot be solved without the nation spending billions of dollars and undergoing a radical redistribution of economic power. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's when they killed him. Yeah. They didn't care. They, you know what? They don't care about racism. The real people, the real people, the real, the, the wizard behind the curtain, they don't care about racism. They don't, they don't dislike black people any more than they dislike poor white people. What you just heard from King are speeches that I guarantee you 90% of, of my listeners who are astute and versed in uh, American history and African American history, I guarantee you 90% of my listeners have never heard that because they had to whitewash King. They whitewash King, not just in a racial sense, but in a, um, in a uh, social justice sense. It did not cost, listen to his, his words. It, 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 this might as well be 1965 people, I'm telling you. It did not cost the nation one dime to integrate the lunch counter. It did not cost them one dime to get rid of segregation and to integrate schools. But the real problem, the problem for which they killed King cannot be fixed without billions of dollars of redistribution of wealth. And he just said it. I mean, of course, everyone listening to him like, ah, Dr. King was a socialist. No, no, I think I said this uh, on another show. Socialists are merely, today's socialist, what you consider to be a socialist is merely a person who is an intelligent capitalist that understands that capitalism will destroy itself and destroy everyone in the process. But the people who have you so afraid of ah, socialism, communism, fascism, Maoism, Leninism, all of that, they make you afraid of it because they understand that if you ever caught wind of what's really going on, then you would say, wait a minute, these trillions of dollars that are being taken from the, the collective United States body politic, this money that's been taken from the people should not all go for war. And when we say go for war, that's a very specific phrase, people, that, that goes to defense contractors. It goes to people who build the weapons. It goes to, it doesn't go to the troops. Do you see how, how contrived and how maliciously propagandistic this system is? They will have you crying to the Star Spangled Banner when the troops' bodies get shipped, shipped home. They will cry about patriotism. They will wave the American flag and you'll get that little twinge in your heart of patriotism um, and realize that, you know, they have you saying that you, you, you can't speak out against um, anything about the war, the wars, plural now, that you can't say anything negative about the wars because if you don't, you're not supporting the troops. But because you can't say anything about the war, you can't address the fact that the troops don't get paid any money to put their lives on the line. They don't get any money after the fact. They come home and they're homeless. The people who get the money, because you're quiet about the war, the people who get the money are the people who build the weapons for war. But we spend all of our money there and we have done nothing on the war against poverty. Actually, it's even worse than that. We've gone backwards with regards to creating and sustaining a middle class. 
We don't even care about maintaining a middle class anymore. That's why you can make sixty dollars seventy thousand dollars a year and still be living paycheck to paycheck. They want you to believe that it's simply because you have bad spending habits. But I want you, you guys, to understand something. I, I'm sorry. I see the real hand at work here. I see the invisible hand at work here. Five dollars for whoever gets that reference. I see the real invisible hand at work here. And racism, the evil that we saw in South Carolina. I'm not belittling it when I say this. I just want to put it in its proper context. That boy was nothing more than a handmaiden of a political economic class that wants to maintain power and wealth. That's all he was. Sure, sure, he was trained by white supremacist groups. But white supremacist groups are nothing more than a handmaiden for people who want to maintain political and economic wealth. Racism is a means to an end. And I, for one, think that maybe if nothing has changed in the last 100 years, as someone commented, if nothing has changed in the last 100 years, maybe we've been going after the wrong target. Maybe attacking racism is, um, is the distraction when we really should hit them where it hurts, which is in their pocketbooks. And that, my friends, is the type of stuff that would get you killed. And I, it got Dr. King killed. That's definitely what got the two Kennedy brothers killed, without question. Without question. The sad and unfortunate truth about South Carolina is that it will continue to happen. It happened at Sandy Hook. Um, it just happened here because of the hatred, the, the hatred that racism and white supremacy uh, fosters. Um, it, 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 it will make you look in the eyes of people who had just shook your hand, just hugged you, read a scripture to you, said a prayer for you. It'll make you look in their eyes and kill. And, and that is the monster that has been created and sustained in this country for hundreds of years. That is the that is the devil. That is the devil in the United States. It is the most it is the most effective tool in the toolbox of the status quo people in power. I don't they, they, listen. I'm probably out of time. The people in power. Let me tell you something today. They're black. They're white. They're Hispanic, they're Asian, they're Jewish, they're every ethnicity and race that you can, can imagine. They're conservative, they're liberal, ostensibly. They're progressive. They're part, they're probably, some of them probably part of the NAACP and some of them are probably part of the Klan. Because at the end of the day, it has never been about your skin color, it has always been about the color of money, bottom line. So my job, folks, I'm going to constantly, and, and this, and I probably never get bigger than my internet show, you know, I, because if they ever put me on a program large enough, I'm going to continue to speak the same truth about what's happening in our country, the real hand that is moving the evil that we see in our country. That, I'm going to always speak that truth. But who do you hear talking about this? I don't know. And I guess now I'm going, I'm going to be a conspiracy theorist show, right? Everyone's going to say, oh, oh, he's a socialist con conspiracy theorist. No, I'm just a really practical um, uh, political scientist slash historian that can look throughout history and see the real hand at work. Let me ask you something. You, you, you answered me this. Do you, th do you think that the plantation owner really cared whether or not his slaves were black or Hispanic or even white. All he really cared about was that he had free labor. There were, there was a time when I believe was the Irish people in America were slaves. If not here in the United States, I, I don't know too much about that portion of white history, European history. I don't know. I don't know. 
but I know white people have been slaves at the hands of other white people. I know black people have been slaves at the hands of other black people, but we're talking about the United States of America. So I'm not going to throw that red herring out there, but in the United States of America, do you honestly think that the plantation owner cared what color the person was that was a slave? No, absolutely not. All he cared was that his cotton was picked by the cheapest possible labor, which was slave labor. Fast forward, do you think today, right now, that the corporations and the defense contractors and the people who make trillions of dollars off of war and off of the redistribution of wealth from the bottom to the top, do you actually think they care about what color their uh, second in command is, that their vice president would be or the, the chairman of their board? Do you think they care? No, so long as that person is doing the job that they won't done of, of acquiring, uh, amassing unseen levels of wealth. They don't care if you're black or white. Likewise, do you think that they care whether or not the police officer who is who is protecting um, this system by being abusive to the people of color and, 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 and poor people? Do you care if they think that officer is white or black? Do you think that they care what color he is so long as he protects what they have? Absolutely not. And do you think, one last question, do you honestly think that they would tolerate a white person speaking truth to power any more than they would a black person speaking truth to power. It has never been about race at the end of the day. Race has always been the means to the most convenient, the most uh, repugnant and potent. That's the word. It has been the most potent means to an end. And it has been that which African-Americans have suffered through the most. But if we ever stop and pause and ask the question of why racism, why racism, then it's going to be one of two things. Either, either there's another reason. Either, either you really believe that they just don't like us because of our skin color, which a lot of people genuinely believe. But what good is that? What 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 does that benefit? What does that benefit the powers that be? You have to ask yourself why. And when I ask myself the question why, I see that racism, what we saw, what we continuously see, is nothing more than a tool to distract the poorest and the angriest and the bitterest white people who create who 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 side with 50% of the electorate that allows that, that allows a system to be maintained that keeps them in poverty, keeps black folks in poverty, keeps the system at, at the status quo level, and keeps wealth being redistributed to the top. There's plenty of socialism in the United States of America, ladies and gentlemen. It's just going in the direction that you don't think it's going. It's going up and it's not coming down. And racism is the primary tool to maintain that status quo. 